Welcome back, everybody. Today we're talking about all of the gear that I used on my latest documentary. Yeah, let's nerd out. Okay, let's be real. All you need to shoot a good doc is three things. You need a good story, you need an understanding of natural light, and you need a camera. That's it. But we're all gear nerds. We all want to take our stories to the next level. And quality gear and knowing how to use that gear is what's going to get you to that next level. All right, so I'm just going to put this out there. I'm going to probably catch some flag for it, but I don't really care because I'm pretty sick of a lot of these filmmakers out here on YouTube that are always talking about gear. But there's really two main approaches that I've seen taken about this gear topic. First, you got the gear reviewers who have all the gear, but they don't know how to properly use it and they don't know how to tell a good story with it. And then you have people that think that story is the only thing that matters and they don't really put a lot of effort into making their images beautiful, which actually help tell a better story. So I just wanted to like set that baseline that I think both those schools of thoughts are wrong. And it's just kind of like my premise going into why I use so much gear on this. At the end of the day, there was a lot of stuff that I wish we could have used, but just didn't have access to. At the end of the day, all I want to do is tell the best stories I possibly can without compromising on the imagery. And I believe if you're going to stand out in the documentary space, you have to be able to tell a good story and you have to be able to tell it in a beautiful way, which is going to take using gear and knowing how to use it properly. So with that being said, I'm going to quickly go through my gear list. I don't want to make this super long. I just want to like go through it. If you have any questions, questions leave them in the comments let's talk about it I might even make a separate video about uh, some of this gear specifically but this video is just to give you a gear overview for my documentary so let's start with everybody's favorite the camera department okay so I bought for this film specifically the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 12k so that camera came in a few days before production started on the documentary I tested it I set it all up I built it out the way I wanted to it I went to go test it the night before our first shoot and it died. The 12K, the Ursa 12K literally just wouldn't turn back on. It just completely stopped. I was panicking. I'm eight hours before our first shoot. And thankfully, my really good friend Adam, who was actually gaffing for this project, has a Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. So I had to, at the last minute, change to that. Went, drove over late at night, got his camera, came back, set it up. And so we shot the whole project on the 6K Pro, probably 85% of it on the 6K Pro. And then we also used some shots with the Pocket 4K as well. So I definitely was like super bummed that the 12K um, didn't actually end up working for the project because I was super psyched to use that camera. I think it's a beautiful image. I still think it's a great camera. I just got super unlucky with the unit that I bought. So I sent it back, got my money back. Everything was cool with that. But overall, I'm just like super happy with how the 6K Pro um, turned out. It just is a beautiful camera, especially for the money. Like you can't beat, you can't beat that camera for the price. So I bought a set of vintage Canon FDs uh, for this project. I found them locally, which was super nice. I could go out there, test them, look at them. And I converted all of them to EF mount using SIMOD lens conversion kits. Did it all myself. It was super easy to do. We used the Canon FD 28, 50 mil, 85, and the 135 for a couple shots. And then I also used my Helios 44-2 for a couple specialty shots just because of the lens flaring on that lens is just phenomenal. So I wanted to use that for a few shots as well. And then I also did use my Canon uh, 16 to 35 for the, the car shots that we have in the film. There's a couple like random like car shots where I had to be super close distance. So I needed a really wide. Uh, lens, so we use 16 to 35 for that, and then we also use Black Pro Mist on everything because, yeah, because Black Pro Mist is amazing. So <laughs> I used that, loved it. Yeah, I just want to shoot everything on Pro Mist. And then my main monitor for the 6K Pro, I used the Port Keys BM5WR. It's a fantastic monitor, it's super sharp, super color accurate. Um, and helped out a ton with the shoot. All right, so let's jump into the lighting department. This is a big list and I went over most of this lighting in my last interview breakdown video. If you're super curious on specifically how we use the lights for the interview, go watch that video. Very quickly what we did 
did for that was the Aperture 300D with a book light, tons of negative fill. We used the Aperture 600X with a spotlight for a little accent in the background. We did like a studio B-roll section in this film. For that, we blacked out the entire space. We used an Aperture 200X with a small light dome. Color temp was pretty warm. I can't remember exactly what we ended up using that, but wanted it to be a warmer vibe. And then on one outdoor night shot, we used the Aperture 60D to just to add some little fill motivated from some of the street lights. Actually, it looked super dope. We did an indoor scene where our subject was writing in a journal and we used an Aperture 600X as a backlight to add some color contrast to that scene. As I mentioned in a previous video where I talked about um, how tight our budget was, we did a lot of this running gun, so a lot of it was um, just using natural light and really planning out where we're gonna be. There was a lot more I wish we could have done with light and doing different things, but we just were too tight on, on budget and schedule. So let's jump into the audio department. This was the area that I wish I could have spent a little bit more money, but I'm still super happy with what we accomplished for so little. We shot the entire dock with the Zoom H6 recorder, Sennheiser 416 for the main interview and on location Nat Sound. That is just a fantastic mic. I love that mic for the, for the money, it's just incredible. And then I had three tentacle syncs connecting both cameras and the recorder so we could sync those in post. And I just can't edit anything else without time code. Having done this project with time code, it's just a lifesaver. I'm so happy I invested in the tentacles. Huge time saver. Also used a tentacle track eLav as a backup and for the deli scene. In my next video, we will be be talking about the deli scene and so subscribe if you're really curious of how we filmed in an active deli at lunchtime with just a couple labs and it turned out amazing. The second subject in that deli scene we used the Tascam DR10L. They only spoke a couple times so it worked out great. I was able to match them in post and everything was cool there. And so that's basically all we did for audio. We kept it super simple. Audio came out crispy and it's all you really need. Then some miscellaneous gear that I want to talk about that we used for the studio shots. We used the Dana Dolly for a few shots. Super big fan of the Dana Dolly for just very smooth, methodical movements that we wanted to do. Just use basic Manfredo tripods for the interview and for a couple of scenes in the studio. Just some slow pans and tilts, that kind of stuff. We use the original DJI Ronin S with the Pocket 4K just for a couple shots and that worked out great for what we needed it to be. Most of the B-roll was handheld, just the style for the story worked out great. Not sure of the name and model of this menace arm that we use, but we use this pretty big uh, Manfrotto menace arm for the top-down shot in the studio. Also rigged out the super clutch uh, cart that I bought from Harbor Freight, put new tires on it, put carpet on the top of it, it was just, came in so, so clutch, just moving gear around. And then obviously tons of C-stands, combo stands, sandbags, all the usual stuff for your grip department. And then also something that I'm super happy with, I was a little anxious about buying this, but I bought the Pro-Aim Easy Rig knockoff setup. It's just so much cheaper than the Easy Rig, and so I was a little worried about it, but couldn't find an actual ton of reviews about it, but went ahead and bought it and it's worked amazing. I have not, have had zero issues with it. It was, thing was an absolute beast. But when it comes to that easy rig setup, I actually bought it because I was gonna be using the Ursa, which is significantly heavier, heavier than the 6K Pro. It actually was like fighting the 6K because the 6K was so light. So I only ended up using it a few times, but those times that I needed it definitely saved my back and my arms. So I might've missed a few things, but that's the bulk of the gear that we use to shoot our entire documentary, a three day production with multiple crew members. If you have any questions about this gear or questions about any of the scenes, just leave them in the comments and I'll do my very best to get those questions answered. So my main thing is this, keep learning and keep leveling up your skills. Grow your skill set with storytelling and also gear usage. Using the right gear in the right way will enhance your stories, I promise you. If this wasn't true, Hollywood wouldn't spend millions upon millions of dollars making their movies. Because at the end of the day, story is the most important. 
but also having quality gear and knowing how to use it is gonna take your stories to the next level. So I wanna encourage you, don't settle for making mediocre films and also don't let not having certain gear keep you from telling great stories. Find the balance and get after it. That's all I got for you today. Peace.